Welcome to Aerospace Structures. We'll be covering the modeling and simulation of aircraft fuselage. We're going to be covering module three, and I have invited Mr. Uday to help us with this tutorial. Mr. Uday has extensive experience in the specialization in product design, development, and manufacturing. Also has extensive experience in the simulation of structures using CAD packages. In today's tutorials, we'll be learn how to import a existing geometry, we'll be able to model an aircraft fuselage, and we'll be able to interpret the results. From there, we'll be looking at this fuselage when you import that model, and in the description we provide the link, and this fuselage will be under pressure. Why this pressure shows up is because initially, the cabin pressure will be the same pressure as in the outside, as atmospheric. But as the aircraft ascends, the pressure in the air density outside decreases, so therefore the pressure decreases. And that delta pressure across the wall of the fuselage creates a stress in the skin. Because we have stresses in the skin and we have windows, those windows produce stress concentrations uh, due to their existence. So let's go over the tutorial. Thank you, thank you Uday. Over to you. Hi guys, I'm Shreyas, your course producer. So today we will be performing FP analysis of a fuselage section in ANSYS Workbench. So once you have VMware interface, open ANSYS Workbench, which should look somewhat similar to this. And in the toolbox towards the left hand side, navigate static structural and double click on it. Once you do that in project schematic, you will have a window called A under which now you will have to select the material. So for that, double click on engineering data. Now we can see that the default material here is the structural steel, which you will be replacing with aluminum alloy. In order to do that, click on engineering data sources tab, which is shown by my cursor here on it and navigate to general materials and click on it once. Once you do that, navigate aluminum alloy and add. so here you are able to see structural steel and aluminum alloy. So now you need to delete the structural steel, right click on it and click on delete. After you are done with this, go back to the project window and now we will have to define the geometry of the CAD. So double click on this. So this opens ANSYS discovery into which you will have to import your CAD model. Now, when the discovery has opened up, click on the three lines on the top left corner and insert the geometry. This particular geometry has been shared with you. So import it into the discovery. So once this has been done, minimize it and go back to the project schematic. Now double click on model and once the modeler opens up, your geometry should be visible here, similar to what is being shown on my screen. Now in the outline, in the project tree, look at geometry and in this particular drop down, you will have to select the thickness and the thickness option, change the value from 0 to 0 0.01 meters and scroll down again and assign the material by clicking here and select the material of aluminum alloy. So once that has been done, you will now need to mesh this geometry. In order to mesh it, select the option of mesh in the details of mesh change the element order from program controlled to quadratic and generate mesh. So once meshing is complete, it should look similar to this. After meshing process, we now need to define the boundary conditions. And since this is a section view and has reduction in size, we will be proceeding with the boundary conditions of symmetry, symmetric boundary conditions. So in order to define that, right click on static structural, insert, click on displacement. So since this is symmetric boundary conditions, we will be constraining, fixed constraining the linear displacements along the direction which is perpendicular to the selected edges. So for this particular edge, which I'm selecting right now, I click apply. This edge has axis which is perpendicular to X. So this edge is perpendicular to the X axis. So here in the free comp, in the X component, I make this zero by which I'm basically fixed constraining it. And I let the other two components or the let other two axes remain free. Similarly, I'm also going to define a rotational constraint. I select the same edge, but I now make sure that there is free rotation about the X axis and the rotation about Y and Z axis are free. After this, I'll proceed with the other edges. The next edge would be 
top edge so for this i'm going to define the displacement click on the displacement and i click apply so now this edge is perpendicular to the z axis so i'm going to fix it fix the displacement along the z plane the z axis so here i make it zero and now i add fixed rotation and i make only rotation about z3 similarly for the lower edge i'm going to insert displacement but in this case again this is perpendicular to z axis so i'm going to fix it constraint z but al i also make sure to fi fix it constraint y so that it does not move when pressure has been applied to this geometry make it zero add rotational constraints fix it rotation select the geometry this edge select apply now only rotation about z is free change it accordingly make it free after this we are left with one edge which is the one on which my cursor is pointing so we are only going to define fixed rotation about this edge so select fixed rotation and since this is the edge which is perpendicular to the z axis we are going to keep the rotation about z axis free and the other two axis fixed once this is done we have constrained our model but now we need to define the load which acts on it for that we are going to define a pressure which acts inward out to do that again click on right click on structure static structural insert and insert pressure and select the curved surface and select apply by default we can see that the direction in which the pressure is pointing is towards the inside but we want it to be in the opposite direction that is inward out so what we need to do is click on magnitude and add a negative symbol so magnitude would be minus six eight nine four seven so now since we added the negative symbol we can see that the arrow marks have changed the directions and after this we can proceed to plot the solutions so now in solution part of the tree a right click on solution and insert deformation and the total deformation and again right click and insert one mysis equivalent stress so after we have added the required plots we can proceed to solve the solution so once the simulation runs and completes this should be the data uh, this should be the result which you will be getting so here we can see the equivalent stresses or the one mysis stresses and here is the deformation also we will be able to play an animation of how the deformation takes place this is how it should look and this is the end of simulation and again in a situation where you have to change the material properties go back to the main project page in project schematic double click on engineering data and aluminium alloy or aluminium double click on the values which you need to change and change it as you require it so and rerun this solution so this is the end of simulation for aircraft fuselage section thank you guys